Hey guys, Gunshed here, and welcome! So today, I'm riding back from the Anglo-Saxon meet, and it's been a brilliant day, loads and loads of friendly faces, great to catch up with people. Um, but I didn't actually record any footage of the meet or riding to the meet because it chucked it down with rain the entire day. Yeah, so, the Jersey Biker has nominated me for the 3R Challenge, which is the three reasons why you own the bike you own. I have lots of reasons why I bought my bike. But, for those of you that don't know the Jersey Biker, he is preparing for a ride around the world. He's preparing for a ride around the world. Um, I believe he was due to set off this year, but various reasons meant that he had to delay it until next year. But, really, really nice chap. I would highly recommend you go and check out his channel. And yeah, I can't wait to see his tour start. I've spent a lot of time watching Round the World Riders. So it's nice to uh, actually watch a Round the World Rider that I've actually met. So, a uh, little back history. My... And I think this is actually kind of relevant for my bike. So my bike is a 2018 V-Strom 650. This is actually my second V-Strom of this generation that I've owned. I had a brief love affair with a uh, Honda CBR 650F in between. And basically my first piece from, I sold it because I was getting headaches. And I wasn't getting headaches riding sports bikes, I thought it was turbulence. Um, two weeks after I got my CBR, I was diagnosed with a benign tumour, which is what was causing the headaches. And it just so happened that a little bit of extra turbulence on a... Um, adventure bike was agitating the tumour hence why I thought the headaches with the V-Strom I tried changing the screen, the mirrors, everything didn't work so I rode my CBR for a bit hey Spongebob! Um, I rode my CBR for a little bit went touring on it, it crippled me and um, that's when I bought another one of these now there's lots of reasons why I bought a V-Strom so I'm going to talk about the V-Strom in general because obviously, pre having previously owned one, my, I knew what it was like. Um, so it's sort of a combination of the two bikes as to why I own this. So before both V-Stroms, I owned sports bikes, an ER6F and a CBR650F. And both times I did long distance on my sports bikes, got crippled and decided I wanted something more comfortable, more practical. For my use, so my use is I do quite a lot of high mileage riding, or what I would consider to be high mileage, or what I think quite a lot of people will do. So most times I get on the bike, I very very rarely less do less than a hundred miles. Um, most days I ride is anywhere between 150 to 250 miles when I ride, and I'll happily do that distance on a sports bike, but. Part of me for riding is getting out and about and seeing new places, meeting new people. Well, once you've done everything on your doorstep, it's no longer a new place, so you need to go further afield. So a bike that's more comfortable, has the ability to carry luggage easier, and by carry luggage, yes, my CBR did, but it was soft luggage, it just wasn't very practical. And the luggage options are extremely limited, whereas this, you've got choice of soft bags, hard panniers, um, stuff like that. It's a much more practical bike compared to a sports bike. Um, so I knew I wanted something that was better for distance, less crippling when the road got bumpy. So it really meant sports tourer or a adventure bike. Now being vertically challenged and only five foot six, these are not really two genres of bike that uh, go well for me. Sports tourers tend to be wide and heavy, adventure bikes tend to be tall. So right off the bat, my options are limited. I knew I wanted roughly around 650. I didn't want a 1000 or a 1200, um, because I don't see the point in having that much power, and it's just more money to buy them. Practicality-wise, it was going to be those. Now, I test rode the CB500X, the Yamaha Tracer, the V-Strom and the Versus 650. Now the Versus 650, for me while we're on the issue of practicality, is not practical. I do about 7,000 miles a year 
it has a three and a half thousand mile service interval. So, second reason is the way it handles, the way it rides. Um, I think it's a brilliant bike, and I actually would go as far as saying it's the best in class in this sort of sub 700cc um, adventure bike category. I mean, the Tiger 800s are great, but they're massively expensive in comparison. Um, the CB500X I thought lacked a little bit of power. Um, for overtaking stuff like that, it's useful to have a little bit more. The CB500X, um, they're cheaper, less horsepower, much less, about 30 less horsepower or so. Um, so I thought they're a little bit underpowered and also the equipment level compared to the V-Strom is nothing. Didn't even have a range computer whereas this has ABS traction control, three stage traction control, trip computers, all of it. I thought this was much better equipped than the Honda. Okay, Honda have since bought out a new CB500X and that is more in line technology wise and things than this. Um, I really like having the adjustable preload knob on the rear that you don't need to change with tools. Um, it means whether I've got passenger or I've got luggage, I can easily change it on the fly in about 10 seconds. And for example, I know if I've got panniers on, I need to turn it up six clicks. It takes me about 10 seconds to do and I'm ready. So it's just little things like that I really like about this bike. I test rode the Tracer and I felt thought it felt a little bit cheap and the engine in terms of its finishing a little bit bland I didn't it doesn't quite have sort of the engine braking and things that this has I don't think it, the suspension's as nice as this is either so the bikes I rode the V-Strom was the better bike also the V-Strom was the only bike in the class that has a manufacturer option of a low seat now, yes, you can lower suspension or get custom seats made. I don't like lowering suspension. Every lower bike I've ridden tends to have horrific rebound. So again, you know, the options that were available, the V-Strom was the better bike for me. Not everyone's the same. I'm not saying this right or wrong. When it came to buying this V-Strom, I had a yellow one previously, and I really liked the stripes that they put on the XT tank. So I was actually looking for a V-Strom 650 XT which has the spoke wheels, the handguards, the belly pan and those stripy tanks. I love the stripy tanks. And I wanted a white one because I had yellow previously but I think the white ones look awesome. So me wanting a white one only up with a black one leads me on to a very very specific reason why I have this bike. So I was going to look for a low mileage X white XT because <coughs> you can get the sticker tip kits for the tank for the stripes from Moto Decal if you're looking for them. So it's quite nice to get the standard one and work from a blank canvas. Um, so again, looking for a white one. And they had a white one and they had this black one. However, there was one significant difference with this. This had actually been bought they'd fitted lots of parts to it so this had been bought they'd fitted lots of parts to it about seven eight hundred pounds worth of parts and then the person had bailed out of the sale so they got charged for the parts so this had about seven hundred pounds worth of parts on it because they hadn't actually got around to registering it it was still a new brand new bike it was covered by Suzuki's Nautpenet finance deal I didn't want a black one and they were keen to sell it because you know it had been part spec by a person I'm not good and they're all parts that I would have bought like the engine bars the low seat oh they, they'd already bought the sticker kit but they have cocked up fitting it so I didn't have it on but that had already been paid for so I thought well worse comes to worse if the black offends me that much I could just wrap the tank I'll get it resprayed but I've got used to it but I would have been mad to go, this cost me the same as a low mileage second hand one with loads of bits on, on 0% finance. 
I literally would have been mad to go, no, I'll have the white one, please. I've got used to black, I actually quite like it now. I still prefer the white XTs, but there are loads of bits on those XTs that I would take off. So what's the point in getting one, apart from the spoke wheels? So yeah, the third and final reason why I have this bike is because simply it was cost effective to get it. So there we go guys, that is my 3R challenge. So uh, I would like to nominate, I'm not sure if these people have been nominated, uh, Chris Wallace who is behind me still, I'd like to nominate Rob64 and Skeggy Cruiser because I think that will be a really interesting one. So yeah, thank you ever so much for watching and take care.